Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Got a nice big whiskey barrel here to plant up. Or whisk is it just, I don't know. It's just a barrel. I don't know what goes in it. Picked this up on clearance from Lowe's. It was super cheap and it is really big. I'm gonna be packing this thing full and pardon, pardon the hose. Someone recommend to me an affordable hose reel that can hold a gigantic three quarter inch hose because I can't, I can't find one. Anyways, before I get going on this, <laughs> and also, uh, don't worry, the, the camera will end up on a tripod here pretty soon. I know things are a little bit shaky. It's been one of those caffeine days. Issue I have here with this is there's no handles or anything. So I have a feeling once this is full, it's probably gonna be kind of hard to pick up. So gonna need to figure something out. Yeah, not the most glamorous thing to do for a video, but I have to think ahead. I'm going to need to be able to move this. I can't just leave it sitting in the middle of my patio. So went ahead and threw it here on the cart. I'm just going to fill this up with some soil and get planting. All right, that's better. Uh, are we in focus? Nobody knows because it's too much sun on my viewfinder. Well, I'm going to get planting and uh, if it's not in focus, we'll just jump to the finished product. So here we go. Well, all done. Two days later, it started to rain while I was planting this up and it just kind of kept on going for a couple of days, like off and on, but it was very heavy rain and now the plants are looking kind of haggard, which is fantastic, right? Who doesn't love having torn up plants when they're making a YouTube video? Just in general. It's fine though, at least they're watered in. That's a good thing. Uh, I realize this sweet potato vine here is kind of throwing things off a little bit. That's growing underneath this palm tree. That's not part of the planter. When I back out, you can see the cart and I think it just looks ugly. So just know that that's there and it's not part of this planter. And yes, things are very full, I'm aware, but uh, there's gonna be some shifting done in a little while. I'll explain that in a minute. For starters, you guys, the cicadas, as soon as I hit record, I swear they start going. They're talking back. They want to be part of the video. It's fine. That's totally fine. Whatever. In the very back, centered in the back, there is a princess fountain grass. That's a Penicetum purpureum. The label didn't come with a hardiness zone on it, so I don't know, but it's probably, I'm guessing, a seven, eight, or nine, one of those. I'll have it down there below. Full sun, like your typical ornamental grass, and then 36 to 48 inches tall and 24 to 36 inches wide. It has a nice upright growth habit to it. Now, this fountain grass, it's not much to look at right now. A few of these plants are going to take a little bit of time to kind of fill themselves in here. But this princess fountain grass, is going to get a really nice dark purplish color to it. Hence the purpurium in the name. With some wisps of green and whatnot in there, you can tell it's just now starting to color up a little bit. With these fountain grasses, you know, you pick them up from the nurseries and they're in their small little nursery cans and then you have a heat spell and then they don't look good. Like that's all it takes. So I typically, when doing fountain grasses for containers, I've learned that if it's going to be a while till I can use them to go ahead and pot them up into something larger, because if they sit around those nursery pots for too terribly long, they just, ugh, they go downhill so quickly when there's tons and tons of heat and a lot of sun. They just, they, their roots need a lot of room to grow. Then on each side of that fountain grass, I do have a milkweed. These are just the Asclepius cursivicas. They're not hardy here at all, but I try and throw them into just about all my planters as long as I have them to do so with. So I know they don't look great, but that's not the point. They're there for the monarchs. The butterflies need them, so. That's why those are there. They'll get some little flowers on them. They'll fit in when they start blooming. And right in front of that pretty princess fountain grass is a Color Blaze Ridiculous Coleus. This is an annual, except in zones 10 and up. They get 24 to 36 inches tall with a spread of 18 to 24 inches. Oh, and it's a sun to shade. Most coleus can go sun to shade. Their colors are going to vary a little bit. It's one that red is going to intensify. I mean, not much more. It's been getting full sun. This is about what it's going to look like. And I think it is absolutely stunning. It's probably one of my favorite annuals this year, the Ridiculous from uh, Proven Winners, actually. It has such extreme bold color. I'm gonna be planting a lot of these next year and not waiting until fall time. I think that these will look really nice in the garden, like just in places where I want them to sort of stand out and add some contrast. And then over here to the left of that coleus, this is a Celosia. 
I can't find its tag. I'm a mess, I'm so sorry. Oh, found it, Hot Topic. Fitting name, right? That's a really pretty Celosia. This is Celosia cristata. It's an annual. It gets 12 to 16 inches tall. It needs to be spaced 6 to 18 inches or 6 to 8 inches. Tag doesn't say anything about the width, but just a really pretty upright Celosia. The colors on it, I think, would work great all summer long as long as it could take the heat where you live. Maybe, you know, in my climate, Celosia midsummer doesn't do that great. In the fall time, it does a lot better though. In the nighttime temperatures are a little bit more cool. Daytime temperatures aren't blazing, blazing hot. The main issue I have with most of the Celosias that I use in my garden is getting them through periods where it's extremely, extremely wet. But the soil I use, I just use a general all-purpose potting soil and it looks like it's not going to be one that retains too much moisture. So that's going to be good for this particular reason, just for the Celosia alone. it's I'm, I'm gonna have to water it more often. That's no big deal. I'll probably have this on drip anyways, but I'm not really gonna have to worry about it rotting out, which is nice because the soil that it came in was just like sopping, sopping wet peat. And I like, oh, it was dripping when I brought it home from the nursery. And it rained for two days, a lot of rain, but it's doing okay. I got that one potted up in here before the rain hit. And I think that that makes a really big difference. Look at those colors though. Isn't that just stunning? The coral and the orange with that dark foliage great for fall. I really like using Celosias in fall containers, particularly because they're so vibrant. Those are technically flowers, but it's not, you know, like your typical mum or something like that, which there is a mum in here. We'll talk about that in a minute. Anyways, moving forward, there's also an ornamental pepper in here. The variety is called Blaze. A full sun annual gets eight to 10 inches tall. Similar to the Celosias, I have issues with these sometimes in the fall if it's a really, really, really wet fall. I think having it in this barrel is going to make that a little bit easier to maintain. I won't have to worry about it rotting out. And like I said, I made sure in past years I've used soils that held on to an awful lot of moisture. I don't think that's going to be a problem this year. I have had people ask me about how I care for my ornamental peppers. Once the peppers start to kind of die back on them a little bit, that's when I go ahead, I pluck them off and I give the whole thing a cut back. Roughly, like maybe even 50% of a cut back. Giving it that heavy cut back will encourage more bushy full growth and hopefully you'll get another set of peppers at them, but it's a short season, fall where I live. I mean, I'm starting this, it's not fall yet, technically, you know, a few more weeks. But once fall rolls in, we have like, eh, maybe a month until there's frost. I'm in zone six. So a lot of that depends on where you live. For me, I don't get a ton of growing time with them. So I don't often have to cut them back or do anything with them. Generally, they keep going throughout that like six week period. Okay, the mum. The mum doesn't have a name. I was at Home Depot, it was on clearance. And uh, it's a variety or at least a color pattern that I really like, which is this, as you can see, this sort of lighter pink with the yellowy green hints to it. Those are like my favorites when it comes to a garden mum. Garden mum meaning that it's a perennial mum, one, one that comes back every year. It's not like a floral mum where it's treated as an annual. When I put this entire thing together, I really wanted to put a very large cabbage or kale in the middle, but it's still way too warm here to be doing that. And the nurseries are starting to pull them out and whatnot. And the weather's been kind of weird this year, so maybe it would have been okay this year, but just instinctively i don't really like to go with kales and cabbages until the daytime temperatures are below like 85 probably whenever i get really excited and get going with kales and cabbages kind of early like not even that early but you know september they tend to bolt on me so to head and i threw this mum in here every fall i have some faux pumpkins i've cut the tops off of and i put a hole in the bottom and i like to throw a mum inside of them I'm going to be using this mum in those pumpkins. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and let this mum hang out in here with everything else for probably two to three weeks until I think it's safe to go ahead and throw a kale or cabbage in here. And I'm not ready to have pumpkin decor out either. It's Today is September 1st, I'm not, that, that's too soon. I'm not ready. But in two to three weeks, the mum will come out. A kale or cabbage will go in and then I'll, the, you just, I just explain all, you get what I'm saying. This is more just like it's temporary resting site. I didn't want to keep it in its nursery pot. Just like I said with that Celosia, I brought these home from the place I got them on clearance. It's a big box store, sopping wet. A very peaty type soil that's just not going to dry out fast enough with the type of precipitation we've been having this year. So I wanted to go ahead and get it potted up just to be safe. Like I said, it's temporary. I think it looks nice. It doesn't necessarily go with everything, but it's a mum. It's fine. It's fall. It's pretty. Then trailing over the front, there are two types of plants trailing over the front. One there is this beautiful kind of coral colored calabracoa. Gorgeous. And I love it. And then there are some lobularias, which 
these are the ones that are looking kind of haggard from the weather, right? Yeah, the storms kind of beat them up a little bit. They'll be okay though. The Labularias, they're going to need a cutback. I'll probably do that. I don't know, maybe tonight or tomorrow. Yeah, they're getting kind of long and stringy. That's how I know I need to go ahead and probably cut that in half. And then there'll be some nice new growth coming out of the top from the soil. It'll look a lot better. They'll flush out some new growth in just a couple weeks. Got a list some, the Lobularia, and then these Calabracoas in here both do really well with the cooler temperatures in the fall time. And then depending on the variety, not all of the Alyssums like are okay with super hot, intense summers, but most of the newer ones are, and it's not even really that hot now. So they should be okay, but typically September is kind of toasty. Like I said, I don't know what's going on this year. That's the same thing with the Calabracoa. They can take the cooler temperatures, and I've noticed generally when I plant these in like late spring, early summer, or just if I'm growing them throughout the summer in general, when the heat of the summer arrives, they tend to slow down. That's a good time to give them a cutback, stay on top of fertilizing them and everything. But then when the cooler temperatures start to roll around in September, moving into fall, they flush back out and they look so happy and cheery, which these will just, <laughs> they need a little time. They actually look a lot better than they did this morning. I don't know if you can tell it's getting dark out. I had to wait to go ahead and get some of this done because well, the plants needed some recovery from the storms. But I went ahead and I alternated them. I think that it would have looked really cute to just use a solid yellow Calabrac um, or one that's more of a solid, solid orange. If you've been following me along in my vlogs and whatnot, you know, it's kind of hard. Annuals, particularly flowering annuals, are slim pickings this time of year where I live, except for like mums and ridbeckias and things like that. But the Calabrax, not so much. But I got lucky. It was on clearance. It was in a hanging basket for five bucks. I went ahead and divided it up, tossed it in there, and they'll fill out and they'll just they'll look pretty. I did originally have an ornamental millet in here, and I went ahead and swapped that out because uh, the millet is going to have more of an upright growth. And I'll talk about that millet more when I do the tropical fall planter. Yeah, the millet's gonna have more of an upright growth, whereas this beautiful princess grass in the back is also gonna have an upright growth, but it's gonna fan out some. Basically, this grass that I have in here is going to need more space, and this is the bigger container, so I decided that's the direction I wanted to go. Grasses in fall containers, it's like very typical is what everybody does. You know, that's for a reason though. They add texture, they add movement. When you get the colorful penicitums, they really just draw your eye back. Something I absolutely love about them is how they move in the wind and as they send up their seed heads and those start to dry, it really just, it looks very fall and very pretty. But this color blaze is ridiculous right here might end up wanting a little bit more space. So I might have to do a little bit of reconfiguring here. I don't know. Like I said, this growing season's pretty short for a coleus right now. It's only gonna have maybe five to six weeks of growing, but a coleus can do a lot of growing in five to six weeks. So we'll just have to wait and see with that one. If that becomes the case, then let's pull some things out and rearrange it. It's not going to be a big deal. Now I just kind of wanted that contrast in there between everything. I think it looks nice. It's so pretty. Yeah, that's everything. Sorry for the informality. Just kind of going with the flow here. I know a lot of people can relate. The weather's just been weird this year and sometimes it makes filming a little bit complicated. So just kind of working with what I got and trying to blend things in with a lot of clearance plants too. That can sometimes be a struggle. Clearance plants don't always look that great. Very bright and very vibrant for a fall planter, I know, but you know, I mean, you've seen my backyard, my other videos, that's kind of my thing. That's my aesthetic. I like things just a little bit different. And with this, it's still a really pretty fall arrangement, but it's also like just a pretty arrangement in general, which is what I like. Okay, getting dark enough, gonna wrap things up. Comment down below, say hi, how's everybody? Everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. And if you haven't already and you'd like to, give the video a thumbs up. That makes a really big difference for the videos and for the channel, so thank you. And subscribe as well and hit that notification bell. I'll upload multiple times a week and that way you'll know when new videos come out. I have all my social media linked down below. I'm on Instagram way, way more than anything else. That's usually the best place to find me. Oh, and I know I haven't placed the planter yet and sometimes people really prefer to see them placed and set up where they're going. This is going to grow in my front yard and I'm not, I'm just not ready to put false stuff out there yet. I'm so sorry. But when I do, it'll be updated. It'll either be in a vlog or in a separate video. Maybe I'll move them all at one time and like do a whole fall setup thing. I don't know. But I wanted to go ahead and get these things started now. So they have a little bit of time to settle in. And then maybe like mid-September, I'll start doing the fall decor stuff and whatnot in the front yard. Well, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. And as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye. Bye.